Yeah, I love that you start with this question. It's so wonderful. Um, and I might have a different answer on a different day. <laughs> but, to, but today, um, what I, I'm thinking of when I think of grace, so one of my first um, teachers in the sacred feminine tradition, which is what I've been studying for the last several years, her background is Kashmir Shaivism, which is an offshoot of uh, Hinduism. And uh, she taught me about the five acts of creation. And those acts were, you know, first you start with creation itself. And as she told me, you know, divine mother needs to create something, you know, there's this urge to get something out there. And so something new is born, something comes into the world. And then she loves what she's created, right? So she nurtures it and she sustains it. She keeps it going. And eventually, because this is the realm that we live in, that which has been created needs to be destroyed so that we can make something else new. It's just it's just the reality of the world that we live in. We see it in nature all around us, this death and birth and birth and death and rebirth. And so there's the, the act of destruction. And in that act of destruction, there is concealment where we can no longer find the divine or we perhaps feel that the divine has disappeared. And the fifth act of creation is grace in which the divine is revealed back to us. And so to me, it's that concealment and revealment or that sort of divine game of hide and seek. Um, and when I think of grace, it for me, it has a soft touch. And by soft, I don't mean light. Um, you can absolutely feel it, but that touch of grace feels like um, like like a hug, like a sacred remembrance, like, oh, yes, there is the divine at work in my life and at work in the greater world all around us all the time. I just forgot. And so thank you. Thank you, divinity, for reminding me. That's that's how I, I feel into that, that grace. Mm -hmm.